Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and I'm here today to talk to you about astronomy. Why? Because it's a super awesome hobby that I got turned off of when I was a kid. And I bet many of you did too. The reason is because my parents bought me one of those long tubey telescopes, the kind you get at the store for like a hundred bucks, you know the ones. And you, you buy them for your friends and family or your child or whatever, and for some reason they never seem to like them. Why? They have typically plastic lenses. Honestly, looking at the moon, it looks just about the same through the telescope as without it. You can never see anything. It's always too dark. You've had the experience. Well, maybe you haven't. If you haven't, you're lucky, but a lot of us have. Totally turned me off to astronomy. I assumed I would have to spend billions and zillions of dollars to get a good telescope. Well, a couple years ago, I entered into the Celestron um, challenge. They had this challenge where you could win prizes. Uh, by showing things that you've done with Celestron products. Obviously, it's a marketing thing. Um, I actually came in fifth, uh, fifth in the nation, fourth in the nation, something like that. I was in the top five of the nation. I didn't win, and I don't remember which number I was. I, I'm sure it was like five. But uh, I did that using uranium under a microscope. But regardless, they sent me this cool thing. Uh, because of the fact they sent it to me for free, I have to say that they gave it to me for free, even though they didn't like just send it to me for marketing or something. They actually sent it to me because I won it as a prize. But I'm just making sure I get over my legal requirement of having mentioned it, you know, so nobody comes back and says, oh, you didn't do that. So anyway, I got this thing, <clears throat> and at first I was skeptical because I looked up the price of, the, of it, and it was like 70 bucks, 60 bucks, something like that. And I thought to myself, oh, God, this is going to be just like the one I got when I was a kid, right? No. It turns out to be much better, and it's not the brand per se. I'm sure Celestron would like me to say, because it's a Celestron, no, actually any brand that's this type of telescope would be good. The problem are those 2B type of telescopes are called refractor, not reflector, refractor, because they refract, they bend light. They're kind of like a long tube. Think of like a pirate's uh, telescope that the pirate holds and looks through, an eyepiece like that. It's the same idea. Uh, light comes and it's Use the uh, lenses are used to focus the light into a smaller point, allowing you to see more area squeezed up into a little place. This type right here is a telescope called a reflector telescope. It's a Newtonian reflector. It was invented by Isaac Newton back in the late 1600s. I mean, that's how long it's been around. Um, here's the box. I'll open it up and show you what's inside it. It actually turned out to be really awesome. I went out and bought a much better telescope afterwards as a result of it. But, um, so I mean, I guess it worked for Celest uh, first Lustron, right? Because I bought another one. Here, let me show you the actual full light unit. All right, so this is the actual telescope itself. Pull, pull out of its box, fully open, and everything to look at. So basically put, this tube is where all the action happens. You pull the front off. This is a little cover to keep the light, uh, the dust and stuff out. Light from the moon or whatever you're looking at comes in here, right? It goes in this little hole. It goes to the back, and it bounces off of a mirror. There's a mirror in the back. There's actually nothing in the front. But there's a mirror in the back, so light goes in and bounces back, and that uh, that light is kind of squished up as it bounces back. You ever seen a makeup mirror that expands? Same kind of idea. So it flies back here, and there's a little. You might be able to see it in the middle. There's a tiny little mirror that's in here that reflects it out of this. So it goes in, bounces, comes out at you. If that makes sense. You can take an eyepiece like this. Uh, this little eyepiece actually has a lens in it as well. See, has little lenses inside of it, and and pull the safety cover off. You can fit this into here, tighten it up. You can focus it with this little focuser knob, and you can see everything. Looks really great. Has a nice range finder on it too, a, a um, spot finder, if you will. Let me pull this off and show you what it looks like. Um, the actual finder on the telescope that I bought after this was really terrible, so I actually bought another one of these finders to hook onto it. Uh, let me show you how it works. So we take it and we cut it on. Oops. Looks like it already was on. It has a really long battery because I haven't used this guy in like a couple weeks. Now let me see. See the dot? That dot is really easy to use. You just point it at whatever you want to look at and then when you look through the scope you see it. Simple as that. Now I feel really bad because I had a chance to take this out with me on a business trip to the middle of the California like desert. I mean the middle of absolutely nowhere. I could have seen everything and I left it in my car at the airport. 
I just about screamed in the airplane, but I, I didn't scream because nowadays if you scream in an airplane, they you know come and like grab you and drag you away. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, it's still pretty good. It comes with a 20 millimeter lens and a 10 millimeter. The smaller the millimeter, and by the way, I'm I'm, I'm saying this very simply because I'm, I know that probably people watching this are not astronomers. So the lower the number of millimeters, the more magnification you get. And this guy here is, I think, a 15 or 20 millimeter. This is actually a 15. This is a 10. Here's my cat. My cat enjoys it too. Hello, Lab Assistant Mew. Now, Lab Assistant Mew knows to be down from here. So get down, Lab Assistant Mew. You get written up on your next performance evaluation. So anyway, if you get lenses for these, you can increase the magnification all you want to. The reality is you don't want to go over maybe a 10. You don't want to go less than a 10 millimeter on this guy like a seven or a six or five or something, they, you just won't be able to get anything good out of it. The, but this, 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 this scope is incredibly good at looking at the moon. I can see Jupiter with this. I can see Jupiter's moons with this thing. I saw Saturn with it. Um, very simple things before I got my better telescope. I saw uh, um, Lagoon Nebula with this. I mean, I saw a nebula with this. I never thought I would see a nebula. Yeah, I mean, not, not for real, not the way you see it like on the TV and everything like that. And all I needed was a dark place and this little guy. And a pair of binoculars actually helped too. The unit has a three inch aperture. That's 76 millimeters if you want to be exact. And they usually go in millimeters by the way. So 76 millimeters, three inches by 12 inches, which is 300 millimeters. All right. And what you do is you divide this length over this length. So 300 divided by 76 millimeters, and that equals about uh, 3.95. Now, what is that number? That's called the F number. If you've ever uh, done anything with photography, you know that when you, ex um, here I'll show you, with a camera lens, I happen to have this camera lens sitting right here. When you have a camera lens and you close the aperture, the number goes up. So this right here might be F11, F like f11, f7, f5, f4, f3, something like that. As it gets wider, you actually get more light coming in, the number goes down. So f1 would be like a humongous amount of light. That's in an aperture on a camera. It's a little different for a telescope, but what it boils down to is the lower number that you get, the better the telescope's going to be at looking at deep space objects and things that are very um, wide, that take up a lot of space, like planets. If you're looking at really, really distant things that require a tremendous amount of magnification, you want to have a higher number. So what you want is you want this part to be longer. Because the length of this is what um, determines the actual magnification, the focal length. And the length, the, the length, the width of the aperture de uh, determines how much light goes into the unit. Does that make sense? So bigger opening, all being compressed to the same little point. So bigger opening, you end up with more light. You can see things that are more detailed, more distant. The longer the light travels, the more it's able to bend, the more focusing, I mean focus, the more magnification you end up with. And so this thing isn't the best. It's not a high magnification telescope, nor is the um, other telescope that I bought. But I'm not in personally interested in that. I like to look at nebula and stuff like that in galaxies. And for that, you actually want something more like this or the bigger version I have, which I'll show you in a second. But anyway. Now, if you, if you get something like this for yourself, I think you'll like it. It doesn't have to be this brand, by the way. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a Celestron salesperson. Um, but like there are other, so I think, I don't know if Explore Scientific sells them or not, but there are other brands that sell them too. I personally like Celestron, that's just me, but there are other ones that do. But the point is you, what you want to get if you're starting out and you only have like a hundred bucks and you don't want to spend a lot of money, but you want to see if you're interested, get yourself a reflector telescope. You'll note it has a mirror in the inside and the back, and it's not a long tubey thing. It's very short. You actually look right through where you're going to see. Very strange, counterintuitive, that's the way it is. Once you've gotten this, and if you've decided that you like a telescope, you can also buy yourself better eyepieces. And a better eyepiece actually will make you almost feel like you've bought a new scope. Um, I went out and bought these guys. God, I'm going to look like a Celestron spokesperson. I swear to God, I am not a Celestron spokesperson. Um, the reason I bought the Celestron ones are because they're cheaper. If I buy, there's, um, uh, there's a few other brands that make these kinds of lenses, but they can be several hundred dollars more, and I don't want to spend that kind of money. These guys cost about $100 a piece, these really, really, really good uh, luminous eyepieces. And I wouldn't buy these until you've tested this or something like it and decided you liked it. But look at this thing. You pull the covers off of it. This compares to this. 
do you kind of see the, the slight difference? <laughs> um, in effect, it's kind of amusing. These are the same basic lens. This is a 15 millimeter. This is a 15 millimeter. The difference is that this gives you a 40 something degree field of view and this gives you an 82 degree. Now, what does that mean? If you were looking through a 40 degree field of view, you would see something like this. In an 80 degree, you see something like this. You see a lot more. I'll show you some pictures of it too. The pro only problem with a lens like this, an eyepiece, excuse me, and use the exact terminology, is that it's so heavy that it's almost too heavy for the unit. The unit almost wants to fall over. It's just so beautiful to look through this. It feels like you're looking out of a spaceship window as opposed to looking through a telescope. Um, I'd recommend one of these if you get something a little bit better. Now when I say better, I mean more like this guy right here. Um, bigger bigger telescope. You notice I put the eyepiece, that same type eyepiece. I actually like attached it to this old ghetto style because it's a really good eyepiece. But in the end, as you look, you'll see I'm moving the lens cap from the lens cap. Oh well, yeah, I guess it is. Uh, from the front of this, you'll see it has a mirror down the very back of it. Same idea. So, there you go. Now let me show you a couple pictures I've taken with this to give you an idea of what it can look like. I just took a cell phone, by the way, and put it up against the lens and took the photograph. I didn't use a professional, you know, $5,000 astrophotography camera, and so I, I, just, I just put the cell phone up against it. I did this.